In this video, I'm going to go on a fossil hunt with Shay. Then Shay's going to have a fossil hunt on his own, followed by an epic fossil preparation video. Let's get straight into it. There's been two shale falls. One is quite a bit bigger than the other. I've already had a look at the smaller fall and found probably one of the best finds of this type of find in a long time. And I'll show you all about it at the end of the video. Let's have a quick look at the nodule I found. Then we'll look over the bigger fall and see if we can find any more fossils. Here's the first lot of shale slabs that have come down. And this is where I found that nodule, which I was just talking about. I've sat the nodule right on top of this slab. I've already had a good look around a lot of the shale slabs here. Can't really see anything else of particular interest. Just a few shale preserved fossils, broken nodules, and not much else. So let's head round to the next lot of shale slabs, and then I'll show you what's inside this nodule. While we're looking for some more fossils, see if you can have a think as to what might be inside. But it's something pretty awesome. Let's look for some more fossils. Let's start having a look through and see what we can find. Of course, we've got to remember that this is a pretty fresh cliff fall. So we'll be staying far away from the cliff and just looking around the edge of the fall. Lots of shale slabs. Hopefully going to be something pretty exciting amongst them. You can see here a pretty big bellumite fossil. One of the squid-like creatures is just being exposed. Got a couple more over here as well. One that's a lot smaller. As well as that one. It's being crushed down. And another bellum night. There's lots of shale preserved fossils. Just need to find something that's nice and 3D. See there, that's probably the imprint where a complete ammonite has been. Someone else might have found it, or the sea might have eroded it out. Probably being another ammonite there, so there's definitely some pretty decent fossils around. Just need to try and find one. Another bellum knight. Alright, that's had some sort of fish bone or fish cartilage preserved inside from a big sturgeon called a gyrosteus. Leave that there for someone else to find. Whoa! Just spotted something that might be of interest to us. Can you see where it is? Right over there is what looks to be the edge of a huge Harposerus ammonite. The question is, are we going to have a complete specimen preserved under the shale, or is it just going to be the outer world? I think if we get our hammer and chisel and lift this piece of shale, we'll start to see. Let's reveal it. exposed a bit more of it. Let's keep going and see what else we can reveal. Okay, moment of truth. Let's have a look. Okay, 
back here. It looks like it's just the outer world that's preserved. Not the complete ammonite on this occasion. Still a pretty big, impressive outer world though. But we'll leave that here for someone else to have a look at. After looking through that bigger fall, we found a few interesting fossils, but nothing worth taking home on this occasion. I'll show you that first fossil I found now, and then we'll also have a look at what Shea has found. I think you're going to be really impressed with both of these fossils. Here's a look at the first nodule that I found, the one that I spoke about at the start of the video. This, without a doubt, is our best find of the day. I can't wait to show you what's inside. You're not going to believe it. This nodule in particular, I was almost certain that it was going to be completely empty. Nothing at all inside. I couldn't believe it when I opened it up and revealed it. I was so glad that I decided to open the nodule. The first piece that came off was this little shard. And immediately I knew there was something inside. There was then a fracture, which allowed this piece to lift off. Look at that. That's the impression from the center of the ammonite. And this here is the ammonite itself. Hopefully it's gonna go from this bit here, the mouth border, all the way to the other side of the nodule. Looks like it should do. And if it does go the entirety of the way throughout the nodule, this will either be our biggest or second biggest Hildoceras ammonite that we have ever found. Absolutely surreal that we came across that just amongst these shale slabs. Look at that. Cannot wait for my dad to prepare it. And of course, when he has prepared it, I'll be sure to show you in a future video. just met back up with Aaron, we've both been looking at different parts of the beach. He's shown me his Hildosaurus, which looks absolutely incredible. I thought I'd have had the best find of the day, but that looks like it could match what I found. I'll give you a little look at it now. When I first spotted it, all I actually saw was this side of the nodule. And when I turned it over, I saw this. It had already been split, presumably when it fell from the cliff. I think it's gonna clean up really well. There's a little bit of crushing just on the outer world, but hopefully with a bit of reconstruction, it should look amazing. So it looks like we've both done really well today. I couldn't believe that I found it on the beach just like that. You really can't get any luckier than that. Nice. That's a look at the first fossil hunt from today's video. Next up, Shea's going fossil hunting on his own, and after that, we've still got the fossil preparation video yet to come. There's lots to look forward to. Today we've got a fossil hunt, entirely filmed by Shea. This is one of his latest fossil hunts where he went out and ended up getting quite a few really exciting fossils. I'll let him explain more about the video and get straight into it. Hope you enjoy it. I've just got down onto the beach, it's just me today, my brother's been busy with work. I thought I'd come down just for a few hours, see what's about. As you can see, the sea's pretty rough, so it looks pretty promising for some fossils. Little piece of fossil wood there, 
see there's a layer of pyrite behind the, the wood as well. And if you look really closely, little growth lines just there. Nice, we'll leave that there though. That's a pyrite nodule that someone's split open in the hope of having an ammonite inside. Unfortunately not this time. Little water-worn ammonite there. Oh, bit of a negative on the back as well. So that would have been two ammonites in one nodule. Unfortunately, they're very sea-worn, so I can't really do anything with them. We'll leave them on the beach for someone else to find. Ammonite there, really see one. We'll give it a crack, you might get a, a nice middle out of it, see what else we can find. I just spotted another one over here, another really worn one. I think that one's a bit too far gone. There's three really worn middles all next to each other lined up. Keep a little pile here and drop my bag so I know where they are. Looks like there could be a few in there. There's a bit of a keel showing. Nice little negative there of an ammonite. That sometimes they're satisfying just to, to look at. They're quite tactile as well because they've been in the sea for so long, they're nice and smooth. On our Instagram, we often get asked, why do we hit the fossils? Why don't we take them home and prepare them? And in quite a lot of cases, we do take them home and prepare them, especially for nice quality ones or they're fallen fresh from the cliff. But ones in particular like these, especially because we know where they've come from as well, depending on where you find the ammonites, they usually don't split open very well. And if they don't split open very well, they don't usually prep well either. So it's not worth our time taking them home, preparing them. When they're sea worn, we know they're not gonna be the best preservation inside. Let's whack a few of the ammonites open and see how they go. All right, okay. This one looks a little bit nicer. There's already a natural weak point on the nodule. Won't take much doing, I don't think. There we go. Let's see what this one's like. <sighs> okay, so this one's split through the ammonite, but it actually looks pretty nice. You can see all the individual calcite chambers of the ammonite there, and there is the center of an ammonite still covered in rock. Not the best split, but not the worst either. To say it was just a nice little water-worn beach pebble. Split all right. Not a bad little one. Got nice colors. Oranges, browns, little bits of white, calcite. Let's uh, go further up the beach and try and find some better ones. like a nice nodule. Oh, there you can see a how nice sticking out the edge there. Oh yeah, looks lovely that. Looks really fresh as well, it's got still, still got mud on it. Must have freshly just fallen from the cliff. I'll definitely have to use the hammer and chisel with that one. Looks really nice. Hopefully it's on camera, don't wanna miss it. It should split pretty well, it looks like a nice one. Let's give it some light hat. Give it a little wash in the water before I reveal it. I'm convinced it'll be a nice one. It'll be a nice split. Just a tenuous start, and they usually always split pretty well. 
Oh, look at that. If I don't find anything else today, I'll be chuffed just with this one. It's got lovely colours on it, all nice and brown. Awesome. I'm very pleased with that one. Really is a lovely one. It's almost beach prepped, it doesn't need much doing to it at all. Lovely. Let's see what else we can find. I've just stumbled across a little bit of a fall and there were actually some cannonballs inside. I've got six to split open. The varying shapes and sizes, but three or four of them look pretty promising to have elegant histories inside. So let's crack some open, fingers crossed. Let's start with this nice round one. I have got a little bit of a, a crease in the shale here, so I'll set this inside and give it a whack. Well, it was a nice split, but unfortunately there's nothing inside that one. Let's try another. Another nice round one. Another clean split, but nothing inside. Two down, four to go. Another perfect split, but nothing inside. Nothing inside this one either. There is a little piece of one showing in this tiny one, but I'm not sure how well I'll be able to split it, but we'll give it a go. Okay, so we've slightly exposed that one, and there's another little one just there. And last but not least, there is actually one preserved on top of this nodule, which usually tells us that there's nothing inside, but we'll give it a whack and hope for the best. Nothing yet, I'll give it another whack. There was a tiny one inside it, just one. You see the key of it there. Oh well, better look next time. Little laminate inside there. Nice stack just sat there waiting. And then a little bit further down is a one imprint of a Hildoceros. Another water worn dack there. It's got had a few chips out of it in the past. Maybe someone's tried to split it, but I haven't had any luck.
I don't think that'll have anything inside. I'll split a couple of those ammonites that we just found, see how they come out. We'll start with the double with the one behind it. Split okay, I guess. Not complete, but it wasn't complete when I found it. You can see where that's where it had worn on the edge. But apart from that, it's split all right. Let's try the next one. Surprisingly, it split really well. Really pleased with that one. Goes back together perfect as well. These are the ammonites I got today. A few nice ones, the best one being the Tenico Starton that we split earlier in the video. There's another little Tenico Starton just there, smaller one. A few nice split ducks, a few that didn't split so well, but they've got really nice pyrite content. They're all nice and golden. A little bit of calcite as well. But all in all, it's been a productive day. I think I've had a productive session. A few nice ammonites, tenucostatums, small elegantiserus, a few dacs. No bone, unfortunately, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. It's just after low water now, so the tide's starting to come back in. The light's starting to dim as well, so I am going to head back up the cliff. The third part of this video is watching our dad prepare a huge phyllocerous ammonite. The finished result is absolutely breathtaking. Let's have a look at it. In today's fossil preparation video, we're going to be preparing a large phyllocerous ammonite. This is a video which I actually started a couple of years ago, maybe even three years ago now. When we first found the fossil, we removed quite a bit of the rock. And just recently, we've managed to pick the project back up and finish preparing it. I'll show you all the footage that I recorded initially of us starting to prepare it. And then at the end of the video, I've got the finished fossil for you to have a really good look at. It's got some really interesting features on it. But well, first of all, let's get started. Have a look at the fossil as we found it and watch the preparation progress. Let's start having a look. We've not made too many fossil preparation videos so far. However, have a watch of this video. And if you do like it, let us know in the comments. And we can certainly consider making some more fossil preparation videos in the future. I hope you enjoy this one. Let's head back a couple of years and look at the preparation footage that I started taking. Here's the big partial phyllocerous ammonite. So as you can tell, unfortunately, there's a big chink missing on both sides. That's just the way it goes with these specimens a lot of the time. Just they're not fully preserved or sometimes they are fully preserved, but unfortunately they're just paper thin. We were quite lucky that this one, as it broke through the cross section, we can see that the centre of the specimen is fully intact or at least appears to be at this point we've done a little bit of work on it so far just thinning it out and there's still quite a lot more stone to be thinned out you can see the rock is pretty tough some beautiful shell exposed up here and also some loose shale on top of it my dad is now going to remove some more of this stone We're going to be using the air pneumatic tools to remove the bulk of the limestone from this fossil. He's already started to remove quite a bit of it, but he is removing some more. There's quite a thick layer covering the majority of the fossil. That can be both a good thing and a bad thing. In this case, it was actually quite good because the fossil underneath has been completely protected by the limestone nodule. 
Sometimes the limestone makes the fossils more difficult to prepare. Sometimes it makes it easier. It very much just depends on the fossil, how you choose to prepare it, and the tools that you've got available to you. At the moment, it's just quite general work, really, just removing the rock. But as we get closer to the fossil, we'll have to become a lot finer with the tools that we're using to make sure that we reveal the finer details very carefully. And there's a little look at some fossilized bones, which my dad was preparing. Those bones are now actually completely finished. If you'd like to have a look at them in the finished form on another video, do let me know and we can certainly have a look. Regarding the large chink missing out of one of the outer worlds, that was actually missing when it was fossilized. It hasn't eroded away, that is literally how it fossilized. So we're going to consider repairing that to restore the ammonite back to its full size. Now that we've removed the majority of the bulk of the rock, the next steps are to remove a lot of the smaller pieces and reveal the finer details of the fossil. There's also that part of the fossil which was never preserved in the first place, which we will restore. We have to decide whether to restore the fossil or leave it completely empty and have the ammonite feel disturbed by the missing piece. We decided to restore it, thought that made it look better. And of course, if the fossil was ever going to be studied or anything, we would point out the fact that that piece had actually been restored. Let's continue looking at the preparation of the fossil, then we'll have a look at the finished thing. The fossil preparation is going well so far. So far, so good. We've thinned out Quite a lot Still a lot more work to do. In terms of the fossil preparation footage, which I managed to capture, I've got another minute or so, then we'll be looking at the finished fossil. My dad recently finished restoring it, preparing it, and it's perfectly ready for display now. However, due to being busy with work and various other things, I've not managed to record any of the latest fossil preparation footage. See there, we're getting very close to the outer wall and the shell underneath is now starting to be revealed. It's quite satisfying to watch the fossil very gradually become exposed. However, it can be a very long, time-consuming process if you're the one actually preparing it. There's a lot more work that goes into fossil preparation than people generally think. From watching my dad prepare all kinds of fossils, it's really highlighted to me just how skilled the process is and how much dedication it takes. And me and Shay are incredibly lucky to have our dad able to and willing to prepare these fossils. Just a moment, we'll have a look at the finished thing. That's all the preparation footage I have of this fossil. Next thing to do is look at the finished result. Let's have a look at it. First of all, I've got some photos to have a look at. You can see here in this first one, a lot of the pyrite and the suture lines. It's got very fine ribbing throughout the entire ammonite, which is really nice to see. You can see there a really nice mouth border as well on the outer wall. Got some more of the finer ribbing here, and in a moment you'll be able to see what looks like some sort of tooth marks in the outer shell. If you look here at the bottom left of the fossil, you can see three indentations, and we think those are the tooth marks potentially, which led to the death of this fossil.
got another close-up of those potential tooth marks in just a moment, but here's a look at the entire specimen. It's hard to know for sure if they're teeth marks, but we're pretty confident that they are. They're just in the bottom middle of the photo there, as you can see. Really interesting part to the story of this fossil, if that's what they indeed are. Now let's have a look at the fossil on video. You can see by us holding it, just the sheer size of this specimen. It's really, really impressive to hold. This is one of our biggest examples of this particular species of ammonite. Very uncommon to find at this size, especially in their 3D form. You can sometimes find them completely crushed flat or just partial segments of them. But to get one this big and intact and complete, it's really unusual. We've only found one or maybe even two that of this quality and at this size. And that's over the entire time that we've been collecting, so a good 15 or more years. So that's a look at the overall finished fossil. Really hope you've enjoyed having a look at it. Every single nodule here contains an ammonite fossil. They range from large to small ammonites and also different species. The majority of nodules here will open up really well. You can never guarantee which ones will, however these have the best chance. If you'd like a selection of ammonites to open up yourself at home, please contact us on our Instagram page, yorkshire.fossils, or alternatively visit our official website, yorkshirefossils.net, for both ammonites to open yourself, as well as fully prepared specimens. And if you do get some, I really hope you enjoy opening them, and thanks in advance for supporting what we do. There we have it, that's all three episodes in today's fossil hunt video. I hope you've enjoyed watching me and Shay go looking for fossils as well as watching our dad prepare one of our favourite ammonites to date. It's been a really jam-packed episode. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.